Welcome to Drive the DAF. Clear, structured explanation of the daily DAF in 20 minutes. You can even follow in the car. Dalid continues the Gemara's discussion of the Truma Sadeshan, the service of removing a shovelful or so of ashes from the fire of the Mizbech in the morning. The Gemara will discuss a couple of questions about it. First of all, how much ash do you have to remove? Next, the Gemara will quote a lengthy machlokas discussion as to whether Truma Sadeshan counts as avoda, that if a non Kohen will do it, he'll be Chayev Misa for it, he'll be liable to the death penalty. That will lead into a wider discussion as to which avodas one is chayav misa for if he does it when he's not a kohen and which one does not. At the end of the daf, we'll talk about how the lots were drawn, what type of clothing kahanim were wearing. So the Gemara begins by a question that Rabbi Avin asked Truma Sadeshen, when you have to remove part of the ashes every morning, how much did you remove? What's the question? The question is the term truma, which is used, is also used in other places. Truma's Meiser is one-tenth of the Meiser that a Levi receives. However, there's also the term Truma is used as far as the discussion of the spoils of war and the war against Midian that Kaisal gave one five-hundredth. So Truma's Meiser is one-tenth, Truma's Midian is one five-hundredth, what's Truma's Adeshen? So Gemara says it's not either of those. It's actually linked to the word Vehirim. The word that's used to discuss Truma's Adeshen is Vehirim, he should lift up. There's another place where the word vehirim is used, and that's talking about taking a handful of flour from a carbon mincha and burning it on the mizbech. So really what you need is a handful. Now, obviously, you can't take a real handful because it's hot ash. So you take a shovel full, and you just make sure that it estimates to about a handful, and that's the amount you actually have to bring. Okay, now the Gemara gets into the main machokis of the daf, the machokis between Rav and Levi. If a non kohen is to do the avoda of Truma Sadeshin, is he Chayav Misa or not? And the question will center around how you read the Pasuk discussing the idea that a Yisrael who does an avoda is Chayav Misa. And the Gemara launches into it as follows. The Gemara says that there are four avodas that Rav and Levi both agree that if Yisrael will do them, he is Chayav Misa. And the reason is because of the way we read the Pasuk, they agree on that part of how you read it. What are those four avodas? Zrika, that's applying blood of karbonos, either on the wall of the Mizbeach, or even in other places where blood is applied, such as the parochis, the curtain hanging of the Kodesh HaKadoshim, or even within the Kodesh HaKadoshim for Yom Kippur. Next is Haktara, that's burning parts of karbonos, or carbon minchas, or even spices from the Lechem HaPanim, and burning that on the Mizbeach. That is also on this list. And third and fourth on the list are the two Nisachs, pouring wine on the Mizbeach all the days of the year, and pouring water on the Mizbeach on the Sukkot Yom Tov. So these are the four things. Now how do we know these four things? The Gemara says what's special about these four things is that they all conclude their Avoda set. They're the last thing in a set of avodas. There isn't anything that comes afterwards. Zrika is after karbonos. Zrika is the last thing. You apply the blood on the wall. There's nothing else that has to be performed as far as bringing a karbonos. Um, that's the blood avodas of karbonos. Haktara is the burning. That's the last thing. And all the things that require a burning is the haktara, the burning of it. And the nisuch hamayim and the nisuch hayayim, there is nothing else that's part of that avoda. Now, how do you know that it has to be the last thing in the set? So the Gemara says, let's look at, look at the Pasuk which teaches us that a Yisrael which will do an Avodah will be Chayav Misa. The Pasuk says, to Aaron, HaKohen, as follows, V'atu v'necha, you and your son Zidcha with you, Tishmu Eskun Aschem, guard your Kahuna, L'chol Dvar Mizbech, about all things about the Mizbech, that's a key phrase, L'chol Dvar Mizbech, Ulmi Beis HaParochas, and anything inside the curtain, meaning in the Kodesh HaKadosh, V'avadetem Avodas Matana, and you should do work, Avodas matana, a work of giving, a work of placing. That's what I'm giving here. Kahuna vazara hakarev, you must. Anyone who's not a Kohen who will do this and draw near will be liable to the death penalty. So, the word here is v'avadatem. V'avadatem, Gemara says, Ravi and Levi agree, says you have to do the work. This has to be the complete work. Nothing else that's here. It has to be what's called avodatama, that there's nothing left to be done as part of this set of avoda. So that's where they all agree on those four. Now, Truma Sadeshan is a Malchakis. Truma Sadeshan is the last step. The Gemara doesn't seem to think that anything else is part of it. The Malchakis between Rav and Levi, the Gemara explains, is what is the meaning of the phrase avodas matana? Avodas matana seems to indicate it has to be something that you're placing, you're giving something. It has to be something that you give. Shumas Hadeshen is removing, you're taking away from the Mizbech a shovel full of ash. So says Rav, that doesn't count 
as a avodas matana, and therefore it's not on the list of things that carry the death penalty. Says Levi, that would seem to be correct, but there is an extra reboy, there is, there is an extra phrase that includes things, and that's where it says the chol mazbeach, anything which has to do with the mazbeach, all these things count, and they are included in this pasuk, and therefore, even though it says avodas matana, but it does also include something else. So Yomar says, what is Rav going to do with that ex-inclusory phrase? Rav says, that's to include uh, sprinkling things that happen inside the Kodesh Kedashim or inside the Hechel on the Paroches. That is the sprinkling of blood of certain Karbonos Chatas and sprinkling of oil as part of the service of the Mitzorah. Those two things would not be included. Those aren't really Mizbeach things. It doesn't happen on the Mizbeach. But it's included by the phrase L'chol Dvar. Chol Dvar HaMizbeach. All those things are also included. Levi says, you don't need L'chol and Dvar for that. You could just have Dvar. It says L'chol Dvar, that's to include the Trumas Hadeshen service. Now the Gemara says, hold on a second. Levi, I'm not clear on your uh, limud over here. You have a increasing, you have an inclusory phrase, L'chol Dvar, and you have an exclusory phrase, which says it should only be Avodas Matana. So the rule is whenever you have something that includes things, whenever you have a general, followed by an exclusory, followed by a specific, a general and a specific, what we call a klal and a prat, the rule is that we say that the uh, exclusion, the specific, overrides the general. The only thing that's included by the general is things which are also included by, by the specific. This is what we call a klal uprat. So you have the phrase the devar, but that is then limited by avodas matana. So it shouldn't apply to anything else besides avodas matana. So Levi answers and he says, no, but there's another phrase between the klal and the prat, between the phrase the choldvar, and between the phrase avodas matana, that splits it up into two. And that's where it says, limi beis la parechas. U limi beis la parechas. And inside the Kodesh HaKadoshim, that splits it into two separate halachas. And it tells you the klal is what's outside the Kodesh HaKadoshim, and the prat is what's inside the Kodesh HaKadoshim. This is how you read it. Le choldvar mizbeach. Anything which is part of the Mizbeach, and here we're talking outside, that includes even things like Chuma Sedeshen that are not Avodas Matana, that aren't placing things, they're removing things. Then it says, so only based on parochos, but inside, there is only Avodas Matana. Should only be things which are placing, things which are removing, do not, are not included in these halachas, which we're discussing, which is that a Zar, a nine Kohen Hodida, would be Chayv Misa. That's, a, that's, um, only Avodas Matana, and that limitation is only inside the Kodesh Hashem. So Gemara says, well, hold on a second. The phrase the Ulumi Beisla Parachas means that what's about to come is limited um, to Avodas Matana, and this is only referring to inside the Kodesh Hashem. So then, the, also the word Viavadetem, which appears after the phrase the Beisla Parachas, should also be limited to inside the Kodesh Hashem. Hooray! Levi is telling me that the phrase Ulumi Beis Aparachas splits the Pasuk in half. And anything before that is going on all Avodas. Anything after that is only going on inside the Kodesh HaKadoshim. If that's true, so then the phrase we have added them, which says it has to be a complete Avoda, it can't be something which has another step afterwards, that limitation should only be inside the Kodesh HaKadoshim. So the only Avodas that require the limitation of being complete without having an extra step afterwards, in order for a Zard who, who, who who performs those avodas to be chayv misa? That limitation should only apply inside the kodesh hakodashim. Should not apply outside the kodesh hakodashim, based on Levi's logic. But Levi, we know, disagrees with that. Levi goes ahead and he says that that limitation applies even on the mizbeach. So Gemara says no, because Levi has a way around that. Levi says that the pasuk, which is the which from which we learn the rule that it has to be complete avodah with no further steps afterwards, from the word avadatem that starts with avav. That vav counteracts the separating phrase of ulumi beis laparachas. The vav shows you we're going back on the beginning of the pasuk, and we're saying both things outside the kodesh Gidashim and things inside the kodesh Gidashim both have this term viavadatem, which applies the rule that it has to be an avodatama, the last step in the procedure. There can't be anything else over here. Okay, now the Gemara has a kasha, has a shaila, a question according to Levi. The Gemara says Levi has differentiated between things outside on the outer Mizbeach, and things inside the Kodesh HaKadoshim. What about in between? What about on the Hechel? The Hechel is inside, but it's not inside the Kodesh HaKadoshim. It's not outside in the Azara like the Mizbeach, and it's not inside the Kodesh HaKadoshim. That's in between. So what does that compare to? What does that apply to? So the, the Gemara says, you you learn from the word Ulim Mi Beis, has an extra couple of letters there. It could have just said Mi Beis, it didn't have to say Ulim Mi Beis, extra Vavena. Lamed there, that's to include the Hechel. The Hechel counts as inside. 
And therefore, it has the same halachas as the Kodesh HaKadoshim, and it has the limitations of, it's got to be an Avodatama, the final step, and it also has to be um, that you're placing something. Now, this excludes removals, such as removing the wicks, the dirty wicks from the menorah, and removing the uh, lechem apanim, or other things from the shulchan. So now, the Gemara has a list of other avodas, which the Gemara wants to know, why does a czar not get Misa for doing these? According to these principles that we're applying here, a czar should get Misa for them uh, as well. So the first thing on the list that the Gemara asks is if a Yisrael organizes the breads of the Lechem upon him in the Shulchan, he should be chayav misa for that. That's also an avoda. So the Gemara says, well, that's not the final step. You also have to put the spices on it. The two spoonfuls of spices which go on the top of each row of the Lechem upon him. So the Gemara says, well, then Yisrael who does that should be chayav misa. Why is that not on the list of the four things that is chayav misa for? So the Gemara says, no, because it then eventually has to be removed and has to be burned. And uh, removal is not a matana, it's not placing something, and the burning, that is haktara, that is on the list. Okay, next, the Gemara asks about the menorah. A non kohen who organizes the wicks in the menorah should be chayef. He should be chayef misa for that. So the Gemara says, no, 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 because you still have to actually put the wicks in, meaning the first thing was that he organizes the lamps. The second one was that he actually places the wicks inside. So the Gemara says, well, the one who puts the wicks inside should be chayef. The Gemara says, no, because you got to put oil. Oil still has to be added. So Mr. says, the one who puts oil should be chayef. No, the Gemara says, no, it's not finished. You still have to light it. Mr. says, well, then the one who lights it, if he still lights it, it should be chayef. Mr. says, lighting doesn't count as avoda. Lighting is not an avoda. Mr. says, it's not. But we have a passage that says, V'nostu b'nei Aaron ha'kohen eish ha'lam ezbeach v'arachu eitzim al ha'eish. The Torah says that the Kohanim is supposed to bring fire onto the mezbeach. And uh, we learn from that, the Brisa says, the Gemara quotes a Brisa that says, that when the fire seems to be going out, and you have to add fire and light it, so when you light a stick in the Marachah, in the fire on the Mizbech, that's Avoda, and it has to be performed wearing the Big Day Kahuna, and by a Kayin, a Kasher Kayin, who's qualified to do Avoda. So Gemara says, that's not lighting, that's burning sticks to make the fire. We're talking about lighting the Menorah. Lighting the Menorah does not count as Avoda. So Gemara said, then moves on to another category of avodas. The says, okay, what about a non kohen who organizes the wood in the fire? You just said that that's uh, avoda, right? So we should be chayef for that. The Gemara says, no, because following organizing the wood, there's adding two logs. This is a halacha, which we've seen earlier, that after the Chumas Adeshin was performed, the wood was organized and two logs were added. So the adding of the two logs comes after organizing the wood, and therefore, organizing the wood is not a complete avoda. So Mar says, okay, so the one who adds the two logs should be chayef. Mar says, no, because then you have to put the avarim, you have to put the limbs in the fire afterwards. So Gemara says, how could you tell me that? Well, Ravasi says in the name of Rav Yechanan, that a czar, a non kohen who organizes the two logs, is chayef misa for that. Mar says, that's a machlekes. Machlech says if counting, if organizing the limbs afterwards counts as part of that set of avoda or not. Or is that a different avoda, the avoda of the limbs of the karbonos? According to uh, Rav Asi and Rav Yechanan, organizing the logs is the end, the final step in the avoda of organizing the fire, and therefore your chayv misa for that, it counts as a complete avoda as the final step. We're telling you that no, the limbs being organized in there counts as part of organizing the fire. It also counts as haktara, and therefore uh, a czar would be chayev for that, would be chayev misa for that, and it's on the list. Okay, now the Gemara concludes this machokis by saying we have a brisa that says explicitly like Rav, and a brisa that and a brisa that says explicitly like Rava. So first of all, the one that says explicitly like Rav lists the four avodos, and it leaves. Shuma Sadeshan off the list, in the list of Avodas that a Yisrael or a non Kohen who performs on his Chayat Misa, phrases the list slightly differently and says it as follows. It says, These are the Avodas that a Zor, a non Kohen who performs on his Chayat Misa, and it lists all types of blood applications, sprinkling blood, whether inside or outside in the Kodesh Akdashim or outside in the Azara, any type of blood sprinkling, including the uh, spraying, there's, there are this pouring, spraying, and squeezing. Carbon uh, you do what's called maze. On a bird, you do what's called mitzo. You have to actually squash the bird onto the wall of the mizbech. All these things count as blood applications. Next is the burning. That's a oof, any type of burning. 
Next on the list is Nisach, the one who pours the water and the wine. Nisach, those are all on the list. Okay, but this price clearly leaves uh, Truma Sedeshan off the list, so it shows like Rav. Then Gemara has another price that says like Levi, and it also lists them, and it says these are things that a non Kohen is high of Misa for. Truma Sedeshan, first on the list, and then the seven types of sprinkling inside. Um, and the sprinkling of a Mitzayra, and putting anything on the Mitzbech at all, blood, haktara, wine, oil, it, just conc- it includes all that in one full swoop, putting anything on the Mitzbech all counts together. Okay, that concludes this discussion. Now the Gemara refers back to the lottery. We'd seen that there was a lottery drawn to who gets the right to do the Truma Sedeshan. So the Gemara says, well, why did they do a lottery. What does it mean? What kind of question is that? We just spent a while discussing that. We said there was a problem that they fought. They ran up the ramp. They fell off. It was dangerous. So where says, no. The question is, why didn't they do all the avodas in one lottery? We know that they did four separate lotteries. The mission mentioned it was one of four. There were four separate things that they did. They, they, they convened to draw lots for avodas four times during the day. Why didn't they do it all at once? So the Muslims was to create an atmosphere of excitement inside the Azara, like the Pasuk says, <speaking in Hebrew> We should go into Kadjah Baruch Hu's house with excitement. You want to have a matzif there. As to which clothing the Kahanim wore at the times of the lots drawing. Rav Nachman says they wore regular clothing, not Big Day Kodesh. And uh, Rav Shesha says, no, they wore Big Day Kodesh. Now, what was the reason for this? So Rav Nachman says they couldn't wear Big Day Kodesh because then the Kayan who loses will just march over and do the Avodah, a big strong guy, he's already dressed properly, he'll just go do the Avodah. And Rav Shesha says they had to do it in Big Day Kodesh, he couldn't do it in a Big Day Chol, because once somebody won the lot, he w- if he was wearing the Big Day Chol, he would just run up and do it, out of his great love for the Avodah, with his Big Day Chol still on. In order to prevent that from happening, we made him wear the Big Day Kodesh before he began the lots. Drive the Daf is a project of the Grand Woodland School and is presented by Rabbi Yitzchak Landa. Find us on YouTube or subscribe to daily emails by emailing drivethedaf at gmail.com.